Um, you're about to get the monster. Uh, the monster is a presentation that is so lengthy that it would be impossible in my humble assessment for any reasonable human to try to present all these slides in, for example, 50 plus or minus minutes. So what I'm going to do, uh, because my goal in putting this together was to try to give you a resource that perhaps you hadn't been exposed to ever before, because perhaps your day-to-day -day endeavors uh, don't allow you to look at uh, the peer-reviewed database science that might be specific to our field, whereas that's what I do in my day-to-day -day teaching uh, as a community college member. I teach exercise physiology, uh, human performance courses like that, so really it's part of what I do almost every second of every day. That being said, uh, what I'll do, I think, is simply pick selectively uh, from the eight or nine different categories. Um, I'll pick selectively and show you some current science and just uh, allow you to assess it, and maybe we can interact uh, a little less formally outside of here when we're done. Um, but there are a lot of areas that I think you'll find uh, relatively compelling. So I'm not going to talk about the training philosophy that we use at Desert Vista um, or that I use at Xavier College Prep. Uh, this is really about science. And so um, pre-training or pre-practice uh, static stretching and muscle performance, which is what we're interested in, yes. Um, this has been a really interesting topic for me, and I'll try to be brief, um, because when this conversation started, and I think I would argue it started in 2004, I would make that argument, uh, based on a paper that came out of a university in Oklahoma, and uh, Joel Kramer and his colleagues put out this paper, and it was the basis for many of these claims that, for example, pre-practice static stretching impairs muscle function. Um, what was not widely publicized, I thought, ladies and gentlemen, was that in that experimental intervention, uh, the muscle group that was stretched, uh, in this case the quadriceps muscle group, was stretched for a period of 14 minutes. Now, if I wanted to impair muscle performance, I could pull on something for 14 minutes. Kay and Blazevich in 2011 updated some of the literature with a nice review, uh, but this more current review uh, began with, if you will, an analysis of almost 1,700 articles almost 1,700 articles, and these are the papers I look for. Perhaps much like you, I'm too busy to read all the science I want to, much less take that science, try to quote unquote distill it, and see where it might be applicable or where it should be if you will dismissed. So when I can find a literature review, I embrace it. 104 studies were ultimately included in this analysis, ladies and gentlemen, and so right there, that's your key point. That's your key point, at least from this paper. 45 seconds or less of cumulative stretching in a muscle group, uh, if you will, imparts essentially no negative, if you will, functional impact on skeletal muscle. So if I go five sets of eight seconds, if I go four sets of six seconds, 20, 25, 30, 35 seconds of quote unquote static stretching in a muscle group, there's not good evidence, ladies and gentlemen, that static stretching impairs muscle force production, right? Uh, that effect is quantitatively trivial, if at all discernible, okay?